actually get into the chapter, I would like to do a small recap of what we have been doing so far. So, the tribulation as the chart shown on your screen, we are uh, we have finished the seven seals, we finished the seven trumpets, then we finished the uh, seven bowls and now we are in that yellow portion where the doom of Babylon is happening. Last week I explained the chapter 17 and 18 is about destruction of Babylon. And uh, just to summarize on what we saw last week, we saw the nature of the beast, we saw the woman who rides the beast, we saw the corrupted characteristics of the woman, she is dressed in scarlet, she is carrying a cup and she is wearing lots of jewelry. Then we saw as it progressed, we saw assembling of kings and the ten kings, um, they gathered to fight against Lord Jesus Christ. We saw the spiritual uh, destruction of Babylon. Um, the continuation from 16 starts in chapter 19, 17 and 18 the attention is taken away from what is happening around Jerusalem to Vatican or Rome today. The 17 and 18 which uh, Rome today is the inheritor of the Babylonian kingdom which started with Nimrod. <coughs> As chapter 17 and 18 depict the destruction of Babylon. Uh, 17, as I said last week, dis, uh, describes the really, uh, spiritual destruction or religious destruction of Babylon. Then the 18th chapter dis, uh, describes the political or the uh, prosperity of uh, Babylon is destroyed. To understand both chapters, it was necessary to ser study certain historical events which leads to what Babylon is today. Last week we saw some of the historical events and uh, then I am just put a comparative um, study of both the chapters. Many things are similar, but you know the it is done in different stages in the, in the destruction of Babylon. For example, you see um, uh, the uh, revelation it says uh, it sits on she sits on many waters and here it says that many people came uh, via the sea to do trade that means through as I told you last week lots of many waters means it did uh, it describes lots of people it describes a multitude of people it means common people so the business is done uh, with the help of common people with Babylon. Then she is arrayed in purple and scarlet and gold and precious jewels. Then here it says in uh, 18, clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet and adorned with, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. Here it says, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of a fornication. We saw what was that last week. And um, here it says God is going to repay her for the cup. Uh, with, then it said with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of the fornication. And here it says in 18, all nations have drunk in the wrath of her fornication. Then it says I saw the woman uh, drunk with the blood of the saints. And here he says rejoice O heaven. For you, you are holy um, uh, and you, holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Then you saw the ten kings or the ten horns who first used the uh, Babylon itself to gather an army and then attack her. And same things, here it says the kings who lived luxuriously because of this uh, Babylon, now will uh, weep at the uh, smoke of her burning. So, there is, this table shows a comparative study between 17 and 18. There are many things similar, but one is a spiritual system or the religious system, one is the economic system. Each system is done at different times. So, just for you to have a view on it, I would recommend after this Bible study, you read both 17 and 18 to get an idea 
more detail. I am just re, um, show, um, re uh, reviewing the picture we showed of the woman riding the beast and uh, here it is. And also I am reviewing the Babylonian empire, how the Roman Catholic Church today or the Vatican inherited the Babylonian empire. Having now um, recapped what we did so long, we will go into chapter 18. Now, chapter 18 starts and after these things, it means after the spiritual destruction, religious system destruction, there will be a physical destruction. That is why the Bible says, after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. It was a very powerful angel. He had a message. And it was the judgment of the great whore in um, uh, 17 1. Chapter 18 is the second judgment. Here, when the Bible says another angel, the word another angel is similar to the one in chapter 17. The, this angel had great authority, and um, you know, uh, other than God Himself, only high ranking angels bring the glory with them. For example, Luke 2 9, the Bible says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon the so as shepherds which were in the field, and the glory of God was shown around them, and they were sore afraid. You see, Acts 12 7, the Bible says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison where Peter was in the prison. And uh, when, uh, when the glory accompanies the angel, it talks about an angel which is in higher in rank than the other angels. There are some angels, when the angels come, there won't be glory shown, but some angels, it is very bright. This particular angel had a great light. If you remember, one of the seals, the fifth seal, the seal was the, uh, the so one of the vials, the fifth vial, when it was poured out, it was poured on the seat of the Antichrist. And there was darkness in the kingdom of Antichrist. Here, when the angel came, the whole earth was lightened in the glory of God. And, um, and you see Hebrews 3, 3 to 4, you always remember when the glory of God comes with the angel, it is the presence of God. You see Habakkuk 3, 3 to 4, God came from Theman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power. And then again Ezekiel 43, 2 And behold the glory of God Israel came by the way of the east and his voice was like the noise of many waters and the earth shined with his glory. But this angel is not the Lord himself. As John says, it was another angel like the angel which came in 17.1, which, which had poured out the one of the seven vials on the, on the earth. The glory will be so great that in the darkness, the whole earth will be lit up by the glory of God. <clears throat> then we go to Revelation 18.2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Here, I want to explain a principle, which you can find in Wikipedia. It is a uh, prophetic principle called prophetic present tense. The angel declares something as if it has already been passed, even though it is yet to happen. This is called prophetic present tense. It is a literary technique that is used in the Bible that describes future events that are so certain to happen that they are referred to as if in the past tense. And the perfect, the, uh, from I will read what Wikipedia says, the perfect serves to express actions, events or states which the speaker wishes to represent from a point of view of completion, whether they belong to a determined Nate past time or extended into present or while still future as pictured as if it is a completed state. So, to tell in simple words, if the prophecy was so certain to happen, the, uh, the prophet will speak about it like as if it has already happened in the past. 
this is called prophetic present tense. So, this angel is now saying Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. You see, <clears throat> there is a double emphasis on Babylon. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. They talks about two falls of Babylon, spiritual and physical. It is fallen to, it fell to me, me, uh, Medes and Persians after the uh, Nebuchadnezzar empire, but it was not completely destroyed. The complete destruction only will come at the end of tribulation. Okay? Now, you see all through scripture, Babylon when it is talks about falling, it is always spoken twice. For example, Isaiah 13, 19 to 20 and Babylon the glory of the kingdoms and the beauty of Chaldees excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It will never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch stand there, neither that the shepherds make their fold there. This did not happen when uh, Medes and Persians conquered Babylon. That will only happen, this will happen only at the end of tribulation. If you see Revelation 14, 8, we saw it and there was another angel saying Babylon is fallen, is fallen the great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, if you study um, uh, Isaiah 21, 9 and it says, Behold, here cometh the chariot of men with a couple of horsemen and he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. This is the prophecy of chapter 17. So, God's plan for Babylon was to be destroyed completely. Okay? The context of these, para, uh, of these two uh, verses show the spiritual fall of Babylon is due to idolatry, due to the and the physical fall or the literal destruction is due to the, glo um, the global commerce or a global business Babylon has with others in the world. The two uh, different type of falls are uh, uh, covered in these two chapters. Uh, you see, uh, you both talk about, one talks about um, uh, their, uh, you know, the gods, one talks about commerce. Now, I want you to check one thing. Do you remember this? Do you remember this? Where this, where was this? In book of Daniel, excellent. Now, I want to point out something here. Many, God has numbered and finished it. It is said twice. Whenever ba finish of Babylon comes, he always talks about it twice. Then, Tekel is weighed in the balance and found wanting. Ufarsin, the kingdom is divided and given to Medes and Persians. The kingdom of God was overtaken physically because it had fallen first to idolatry. Then I, I go back to 18.2 again and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. What the angel is saying is, after Babylon is destroyed, it is going to become the dwelling place for demons, a prison for every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hated bird. You see, uh, this is where the prophetic present tense, this is what is going to happen in future. The angel is talking like as if it has happened in the past. And if you see, uh, if you compare Jeremiah, Isaiah, uh, a couple of chapters in Isaiah, you will see uh, various um, um, animals representing these foul, foul spirits has already been uh, explained there. These unclean animals and birds uh, represent demons and unclean spirits. How the area of Babylon and Edom, 
will become completely uninhabitable for any living creature and yet become a prison for demons and um, unclean spirits. Uh, the, these are the examples given. Okay? So, for example, like jackals, ostriches, um, wild goats, hyenas, and uh, the ravens and arrow snake. So, if it is for example, you can uh, read Jeremiah 50, 51, Isaiah 13, Isaiah 34. All these chapters talk a lot about the destruction of Babylon. And he says in 18, now we go to 18.3, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. You remember that the angel announces the judgment of Babylon and explains that God will pour out his wrath on Babylon because she made all nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, which means Babylon will corrupt the earth with her spiritual fornication. You see, even in Revelation 14, 8, we saw that uh, she, the, uh, the condemnation of Babylon was that she made all nations to partake in her false doctrine. That is what is called fornication. You see, even in Revelation 17, 2, we saw last week, drinking the wine of the wrath of Babylon's fornication, it means people will forsake God and lust after the earthly material and the luxuries the city has to offer. There are many things brought about in the world through the convenience or the, um, or the help of the Roman Catholic Church today. It, covetousness is another form of idolatry. If you see Colossians 3.5, it says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. To, to drink or take up the cup of the rhine of wrath is a picture of God's judgment. You see Job 21.20, 20, he says, My, His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink the wrath of the Almighty. And in Psalm 75, 8, the Bible says, For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same, but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. Because this great harlot, or the woman which rides the beast, is made the nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of a fornication, what the Lord is trying to say here is that, it is trying to involve the whole world into its uh, false doctrine, into a religion which is against God. That is what it is. The ten kings who will rule over the world in the tribulation uh, will also commit the spiritual fornication with her. But we saw last week, they will turn around against her and kill her. That is what we saw. Now, 18.3, we are continuing in 18.3. He says, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through her, the abundance of her delicacies. All commerce and economy will be done through the false religion and the influence of the Babylonian connection. Let me give you some explanation of this. There are going to come in little bit future, the one world religion, where all religions will be united and made into one religion. Catholic Church will run this. The Pope will be a de facto head about all this and he will have a council of all the religious heads and he will be the head of it and they will declare that all religions are one. As a result, every business, everything which the, uh, all the commerce or the business of the world will be done through it. The, and then they will become very prosperous. You see, Revelation 13, 17, the Bible says, in during the tribulation, no man might buy or sell save he that had a mark or the name of the beast or the number of the name. With the mark and the protection of the modern Babylon or Roman Catholic Church, there are going to be many rich people in the world. There are more rich people today than they were in the history of the world. 
the mer merchants of the earth are becoming wealthy due to the great abundance of merchandise they buy and sell through the city. The John later calls them the great men of the earth. We will come to that in a few minutes. Uh, <clears throat> Isaiah 23, 8. Here the Lord has been talking about these great men. Who has taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, who traffickers are the honorable of the earth. You will see that the business is going to be done, whether legally or illegally. They are going to be traffickers. And it says in Isaiah 23, 17, and it shall come to pass after the end of the 70 years, the Lord will visit Tyre, and she shall turn to her hire and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. No one, no government, no and no business is exempt from it. The merchants are great men of the earth. We will see in verse 23, later in, 18, uh, in the 18th chapter, powerful rich people, magnates, business magnates, who use their great wealth to influence the affairs of the world. People like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, you will see all of these people taking strange decisions. The city uh, will be the power behind all these things. Throughout history, we see, we see that kings and rulers and rich men have, there is very little boundary between them. These people have been powers over all these uh, kings and rulers and governments, multinational corporations, uh, they have great uh, influence over the affairs of the world. While kings, uh, they will have a lot of political power, but the merchants they have great financial power. The world leadership is full of political and these unhealthy connections. The, it has been proved the mafia in, uh, in Italy is controlled or in connection with the Vatican. You, you, we cannot believe this, but that is what is it is. It has been proved, but nobody does anything about it because of the um, authority there. Uh, they often these rich people uh, are more of the power behind the throne. To keep their power and their political position, these rulers tolerate these rich people and all laws are made to accommodate these great men of the earth. In 18.4, Revelation, uh, the, John writes, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not her plagues. We, uh, you see, there, in those times, in those difficult times, there are some believers who are also present there. They are like an underground movement will be there. You see in Jeremiah 58-9 says, Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goats before the flocks. For Ro, I will raise and cause to come against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country and they shall set themselves in array against her. Um, then shall be taken, their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man not, none shall return in vain. You see, again God calls his people, flee out of the midst of Babylon, Jeremiah 51, 6, and deliver every man his soul, and be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, that made all the earth drunken, and the nations have drunken of her wine, Therefore, the nations are mad. You see, this is the last state he is talking about. God is telling, come out of it, my people. The, you see, the, uh, there will be, a, I think there will be an underground movement in the, uh, in the last days where believers are, um, you know, are scattered among the people who have taken the seal. And because of the difficulties, some of the people who have taken the seal will help believers to live. Uh, Jeremiah 51, 24, And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea for their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, says the Lord. And 44 to 45, he says, I will punish Bel in Babylon, 
Bel is the god of Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon will fall. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fear, uh, from the fierce anger of the Lord. These prophecies of Jeremiah show that the Lord will redeem his people in, after the destruction of the Babylon uh, of Babylon in the end days. God is pleading for his people to come forth. He is going to, you know, like how he called the Lot and he said, Lot, are there anybody uh, you have? Take them and get out of the city. God wants to destroy the city. Um, and when um, Israel sinned against Moses, God said, separate yourself from among this people that I may consume them. You see, God, when he wants to, he is going to destroy Babylon, he is saying to people scattered in that area to just move out. You know, God does not call, he is not calling ethnic Jews here. If you remember Jews, when we read about it in 5, 6, 7 of Revelation, they are in a different place now. And he calls out believers, considering the fact that <clears throat> Everybody who has to do business, if you want to purchase anything, if you want to go to a simple uh, supermarket or a simple store, you have to have the mark of the beast or on the forehead. It is um, believers, imagine believers dwelling in the heart of this kingdom. They, uh, as I told you, there could be a second level citizenship so, who have successfully not taken the mark of the beast. Uh, in, there will be believers at that time and God calls them out of Babylon. You see, there are many instances in the scripture where this is said in 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Then touch not the unclean thing, I will receive you. The problem of being unequally yoked. God calls us to be separate from the Babylonian system even today. We are required to hold each other responsible for living a holy life. And uh, if believers do not separate themselves from the, uh, from the uh, rebellion against God, He will judge them according along with the world. No more sitting on the fence. If believer do, believers do not call out sin and stand up against sin, even by uh, just by association or by accepting it, even if they do not commit immoral act themselves, if they unequally yoke themselves with believers, the judgment will be together. You see, in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, the Bible says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. The word communications is the Greek word homily, meaning fellowship or having a partnership with unbelievers, with people who are following the Babylonian system. God calls you to come and be separate. Do not do that. And you see, then 18.5, the Bible says, For our sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered our iniquities. God is going to judge Babylon because the sins have reached to heaven. This um, sort of picture draws us back, takes us back to the rebellion, first rebellion of what we spoke in depth the last week, of the rebellion of Babel, where the people of earth decided to build a uh, tower which reaches to heaven. In Genesis, uh, Genesis 11, 9, therefore is the name called Babel, because the Lord did confound the language of all the earth, and from then, di thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all earth. The Jeremiah 51, 9, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed, forsake her. Let us go everyone unto his own country, for our judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Then 51.3 says, Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. You see, <clears throat> for all sin, any sin we do, the sin has to accumulate for a level for God to work. You see, in the Pre previous examples, there is a timeline for sin. Genesis 4.10, the Bible says, and he saith, What hast thou done? The voice of a brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Then he says, um, Genesis 18.20.21, The Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom 
and of Gomorrah is great, because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. You know in Second Chronicles 28, 9, God sends a prophet to Israel and tells, you have slain them in a rage that reaches to heaven. When he sent Jonah to Nineveh, in Jonah 1, 2, he says, arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. In Ezra 9, 6, Ezra cries out to God in prayer and said, God, I am ashamed to blush or even to lift my face to thee, my God. For my, our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. This is the reason why there are no instantaneous judgments of God. Sin needs to pile up for God to execute his judgment. Believers and unbelievers think that because they have no consequence for their actions, it is okay with God. It is the same principle now, uh, that time and now. And it is the same principle which will be used for Babylon or Vatican in the end days. We already saw when the seventh vial was poured out and the great earthquake which struck Jerusalem and divided into three. Do you guys remember the last vial? There is earth, earthquake will divide um, Jerusalem into three parts. And it says, uh, there God says in uh, 19th verse, he says, and great, great Babylon came in remembrance before the Lord to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness, fierceness of his wrath. The word translated remembered means to call to mind or recount things already that has happened. God allows rebellion and sin to run its course, but it eventually reaches heaven and God will deal with it as a righteous judge. In a, in a court of law, the judge decides on a verdict based on evidence and, the, and the, what is brought before the judge. Likewise, God brings to remembrance all Babylon's transgressions that have reached the heaven. The, the fact that God waits to judge sin and rebellion is an evidence of his long suffering uh, and the desire that everyone will repent. It may seem at times that God will never judge the wicked, but he always does. Throughout history, God has dealt with nations corporately in judgment, even when their rebellion reaches heaven. Even under Mosaic law, God dealt with Israel in judgment because they broke his covenant. He made them, by, he, may, he may judge them for turning towards false gods. <clears throat> and he says in 18.6 as we continue, he says reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled, fill her to the double. God is going to pay back for our works. The martyrs for martyring and especially for Babylon for killing his say, servants for idolatry and for false teaching, double of what Babylon has done. The Lord is still addressing the believers here. After telling them to come out of Babylon in verse 4, in, in 6 he says, God is going to take vengeance on Babylon, whom is, you know, he will send, he will send destruction on Babylon. In fact, all through scripture, we see God appoints angels and humans as agents and um, giving them authority to execute uh, his judgment. Retribution or paying back is goes back to Old Testament law, where the punishment matched the crime as the judge determined it. And there was instructions to the judge to follow the law strictly and not make any excuses. You see in uh, Exodus 22, 9, for example, for all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox or for ass, for sheep, for raiment or for any manner of lost thing, which another challenges to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, whom the judges shall come uh, condemn and he shall pay back double unto his neighbor. This is a principle of sin, which I am going to explain to you today. Why God demands double from Babylon? Isaiah 42, he say, 40 chapter, second verse, 
speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her, for her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received the Lord's hand double for her sins. Double. Jeremiah 16, 18, at first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have defiled my land and they have filled my inheritance with the car uh, carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. In Jeremiah 50, 21, when talking about Jerusalem, God calls the name of, uh, um, sorry, of call, speaking about Babylon, he calls, um, he calls Babylon Merathaim. Merathaim means double rebellion, that is the meaning of it. God tells his people to pay double. The reason is, when works or deeds are done against somebody, it means you do against that person and also sin against the Lord. That is why there is double consequence. You understand? That is the double thing. Um, you know, we saw these passages, everything, whenever there is an offense done, you have to repay double. So, that is why when you offend somebody or you cause somebody to stumble or you cause sin against somebody, you not only have to go first and settle with that man, you also have to settle with God because it is double. Okay. So, some people say, oh, I am angry with him. Okay. I ask sorry from God. I do not have to ask the other person. It does not work that way. With God, punishment is double. Sin is also double. His, re uh, his re reward for restoration is also double. You see, we saw in Exodus, 20, uh, to, um, uh, Exodus 22, 9 here, God calls even Babylon, Merathaim means double rebellion. So, remember this principle of double. God's, when you offend, when you sin, it is always a double offense. You sin against the person and you sin against God. Amen? Everybody is okay with that so far? Isaiah 61, 7, for your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be to them. See, the rewards also, God's reward is also double. Zechariah 9, 12, he says, turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will rem uh, render double unto thee. <coughs> You see, God always, re, he, the punishment is double, but the reward is also double. Then we go to Isaiah 7th verse of 18th chapter. He says, how much has she glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and I am no widow and shall see no sorrow. This is a direct quote from the book of Isaiah. That is why it does not seem um, meaningful, but I am going to explain that. Isaiah 47, 8, he says, therefore, he is talking about Babylon, therefore hear now this, thou art given to pleasures and dwellest carelessly and sayest in, a heart, in, in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. I sit not as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of my children. You see, this is a direct quote. Just as Babylon made the nations intoxicated with the drunkenness of the cup of her abominations. She herself is drunk, trusting in her own knowledge and wisdom instead of obeying God. Like other nations who did not glorify God and profess themselves wise, God will turn and destroy Babylon. You Have you wondered why these great civilizations, great kingdoms, everything come to an end? It is because the time God will destroy them because they disobeyed God. They moved away from God. God will always judge. Uh, <clears throat> here, 18.7 is talking about Babylon who tried to become very proud in front of God who and very arrogant claiming say that she is sitting as a queen. But then in uh, Jeremiah 50.31, Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, said the Lord of hosts, for the day is come, the time that I will visit thee. You know, Babylon is boasting, oh, I am, I am very well, I have got big, um, you know, big kingdom, I have got everything here, I have got riches. Then God said, I will come and I will visit thee. Isaiah 47, 11 talks about a sudden uh, punishment. Um, he, and then he says, 
the, in that day Babylon will be destroyed. Babylon calls herself queen and you know it is just the title these days you know, the Roman Catholic Church gives Mary queen of heaven. Babylon calls herself queen. Everything Babylon is doing, it is doing to uh, in the form of Mary. Whatever Mary is, that is what Vatican is. That is what um, uh, the woman who sits on the beast is. Uh, this is the false religion and they exalt themselves. You know, then another thing the, um, the world religion is talking about, humanity, be human, do not be religious. That is the new quote you see these days. The first idea of humanism was expressed at ba Babel and uh, you know they said oh we will be together, let us build a tower, let us be together. Let us, and then um, <coughs> people are very optimistic in spite of the world history, there is so much destruction, so much killing, so many things, but they say we have to become one uh, and uh, they think that they can take the, the control of their own destiny through science. You know, they do not have any place for God. You are, our education system, our um, world system, our uh, religious system, everything talks about, you know, human, you do what is right for you. You do not have to obey God. That is the way it is going. That is what is the, is the wine of uh, fornication of Babylon. Then he says in Revelation 18.8, Therefore, her plague shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord of God who judged her. God gave Babylon, how many years you think? Nearly 5500 years to repent, because just after the flood, I think you can say 3500 years or around that, it is a long time. What she did? She did not turn around. She contaminated the people of the world. All religions, listen to carefully to me, all religions of this world can be traced to the Babylonian religion. When people were scattered in the, uh, in the building of Babel, they took their religion with them and they modified their religion to suit the lifestyle they were living. They started to worship the creation instead of the creator. Romans 1.23 says, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts and creeping things. They changed the image of God to various things. Okay? And because of the lack of any consequence, Babylon thought, oh, she is very wise. You know, we saw, and then Isaiah writes this. Because of these two things shall come upon thee in a moment, in one day, the laws of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of their sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Today, the Vatican says, that the tradition of the church can override God's word. And then it says the third thing that Pope can override God's word. And he is starting to do it. He did, he changed the Lord's prayer. Therefore, evil shall come upon thee and thou shalt not know from when it riseth. Mischief shall fall upon thee, thou shalt not be able to put off. And the desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which you will never know. Here the, uh, here the passage in Isaiah talks about two plagues, death and famine. The plague of death is widowhood by the loss of children and of citizens and the plague of famine is in immediate scarcity of the necessary things caused by the desolation of the land and creating uh, uh, and destroying the businesses. The last plague of mourning will come upon those who supported uh, Babylon, who profited from Babylon, the kings of the earth, the merchants and which we will discuss later in the chapter, but if not today, maybe next week, but we have not completed uh, the chapter. Then we come to Revelation 18, 9, 10, 
and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall beware her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing far off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for one in one hour is that judgment come. If you see Revelation 83, 183, we saw the ten kings who rule over the world in the greater part of uh, tribulation, they will gather together with the help of the church and they will turn around and attack her. But they, they will give their power to the beast to, uh, and they will then rule, then rule under the beast. Then they will, the kings of the world will then start to worship the beast. The religion will be taken over by the Antichrist. The, uh, because of the centralized business, these people, these merchants will become very rich. Uh, we, because everything is moved through the beast. The kings of the earth will now look at Babylon being destroyed and burning. Imagine the whole Vatican catching on fire and burning and they will be crying. They will not go close, they will be far away and they will be crying. In you know in uh, Ezekiel 27-32 and, and in their wailing they shall take up a lamentation for thee and the lament over thee saying what city is like Tyrus like the de like destroyed in the midst of the sea when the waves went forth out of the seas thou filledest fill, filledest many people thou did enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and thy merchandise the kings of the earth will be shocked at the destruction they you know they are so deceived they themselves attack the thing and after she is burning they will regret on it the smoke will be there it will be so hot that they cannot go close to it the you know, they have, all of them will now give their authority to the beast, to worship the beast. And then next week we will see the remaining part of the destruction of Babylon. Any questions? I know it is a lot to, to take in, but I, I encourage you to uh, re-watch this and um, um, Go through Isaiah 50, uh, sorry, Jeremiah 51, 50, 54, and Isaiah 46 and 47, and Isaiah 21. You will see that these um, um, are, uh, you know, uh, they give you a view of what it is uh, in in this uh, in the sense of it. Yes, brother ji, any question? One hour. One hour it will be destroyed. God, it is supernatural brother. Now it is tribulation. Things have to progress in such a certain way. And this is the last part of tribulation. So it, they have to be destroyed. Yes, spiritual destruction will have. Uh, the question uh, brother Ravi is asking is, it will be destroyed spiritually too and physically too. Yes. The first destruction will be spiritual and then the physical destruction. All what you see in Vatican today will be burnt on that day. But when you say it's like physical destruction, mm. but isn't the spiritual destruction already happening in uh, Babylon because they are spiritual, spiritually they are already dead? Yes, but I'm what I am trailing when I say spiritual. Now the question Brother Ravi asked was, are they not already spiritual dead, spiritually dead? How can they be now die spiritually? The issue is their teaching and their concept of God. They are teaching false doctrine. It is a spiritual thing because the evil spirits are using it to deceive people. So that concept will be destroyed first. That is the spiritual destruction. Then physical destruction will take place. It will happen one after the other, it won't happen same time. That's what these two uh, two chapters talk about. The chart I showed before, it's better if you read the chart and look through it. <laughs>